Hello, I'm Dr. Robert Bastian of Bastian Voice Institute. Our subject is early vocal fold cancer, and our purpose is purely informational to help you work more effectively with your personal physician. First, some background. The vocal folds are found inside the larynx or voice box. It's the heart structure mid-neck right here. Here's a model of the voice box and trachea. Note that it has parts, thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, trachea right here. Here's the thyroid gland, and then the nerve that goes to the vocal folds is behind. Now inside the larynx are the vocal folds. Here you see them, one there and one there. They are like a pair of lips, except that instead of functioning this way, like my lips here, they function side to side, and they pinch together to make sound and open in the back, almost as though there's a hinge here in the front in order to breathe. Now, just like the trumpeter's lips, they create the sound of the voice, but from within the neck. They're covered by wet, shiny, glistening surface layer called squamous mucosa, and that's why cancers that form in the larynx are typically squamous cell carcinomas. Sometimes the alternate term, term epidermoid carcinoma is used. When a tumor grows on the surface of the vocal folds, the result is hoarseness. The most common cause of this kind of tumor is tobacco smoke going past the vocal folds down on their way, its way to the lungs. Another known cause is HPV or human papillomavirus infection, and some believe that acid coming up at night during sleep and bathing the throat is another cause, though I think that is controversial. Vocal fold cancer is diagnosed by biopsy of a growth causing hoarseness, and then it is staged using the TNM system. T stands for primary tumor, N is for lymph node, it like in the neck, and M is for metastasis such as to lungs and liver, distant spread. Now fortunately, the vocal fold is fairly isolated immunologically, so spread to lymph nodes or distant organs is rare with early vocal fold carcinoma stage one and two, which is our subject. So for practical purposes, the TNM staging system is boiled down to just T. We have T1, which is extremely early and superficial with completely normal mobility of the vocal folds. T2, the tumor penetrates a little bit into the muscle and it reduces the movement of the vocal fold. T3, uh, just if you're interested, tumor replaces the vocal fold essentially and fixes it so it no longer moves and T4, it penetrates beyond the vocal fold and into the cartilage of the voice box. Now for workup, uh, we think that biopsy, of course, is needed to prove the diagnosis, and that's done either in the operating room under general anesthesia, or more and more commonly these days, just using topical anesthesia with the patient sitting in a chair in a video endoscopy procedure room, such as those that we use at BVI. Because spread beyond the larynx is so rare, we don't routinely do CT or other scanning for these very early tumors. Of course, each circumstance is individualized, but very often we use the biopsy result, very clear endoscopic images of the vocal folds, and physical examination of the neck as complete and sufficient for staging and treatment planning. Now, Let's talk about treatment for these early stage vocal uh, fold cancers. First, chemotherapy has no current role. It's great for other tumors, but it would be dramatic overtreatment for this early kind of tumor, and it wouldn't be very effective anyway as compared to the other options. Your two basic options are surgical removal and external beam radiation therapy. Both of those are equally valid choices. Surgery is done through the mouth while the person is completely asleep under general anesthesia. Radiation therapy is a treatment that's kind of like shining light on the outside of the neck. It's an invisible kind of light radiation and that requires 30 visits because it's not given all at once. It's given in 30 little pieces and so 30 visits to a radiation facility 
over approximately six weeks' time. Well, if both radiation therapy and endoscopic laser surgery are excellent options, how are you going to choose between them? Well, on our website, you will find a table that compares and contrasts seven points of competition that we have uh, developed between these two options. And I'm also going to review those seven points here. First, let's build the list of the points of competition. They are cure rate, convenience, early side effects, late side effects or untoward consequences, cost, voice result, and implications for further treatment if the first treatment fails. So number one, cure. Well, for both radiation and laser surgery, the cure rate is, is essentially the same, about 85-90% for both laser and radiation. Second point of competition is convenience. The, uh, for radiation, you have the 30 visits that I spoke of earlier. Laser is a single visit to an outpatient operating room or a hospital OR uh, for a brief general anesthetic. Third point of competition, early side effects. Radiation begins at about two weeks to give you a little pinkness of the skin and then you develop what looks a little bit like a sunburn in this part of the neck where the overtop of the larynx. And of course that same kind of sunburn is happening inside and so you have that, that uh, sore throat and usually you lose your voice for a few weeks then until the radiation reaction subsides. The early side effects for surgery, laser surgery, is you have the sore throat from the surgery, usually not more than a couple or three days. There's a small risk, really small, of a chip or a scratched tooth, uh, very uncommon, but it can happen. And then, of course, your voice is weak because of that little piece that's been removed and the manipulation of your larynx during surgery. So it's just a few days. Fourth on our list is late untoward side effects. A small percentage of people, quite a small percentage of people who have radiotherapy undergo what I call progressive leatherization. The tissues late, long after radiation was completed, years later, the tissues stiffen and thicken. And so if that happens, the vocal folds can become stiff and not want to vibrate very well. And I've seen that a number of times. Uh, perhaps 10 or 12 times where it was really significant and, and a, a real problem. Uh, so it's not common, but it can occur. And uh, it's, that usually occurs maybe 10 years or more after radiation is completed. There is a rare radiation-induced cancer or a sarcoma. I've only seen that three times, so it's fairly rare. Late issues with laser surgery, I have yet to identify any. There are none. Fifth on our list is cost. Going to vary in different places, but I think it's very fair and conservative to say that radiation would be uh, at least five times the cost of laser surgery. Sixth issue is voice quality. Years ago, uh, it used to be generally agreed that radiotherapy gave the better voice result. That's not so much so anymore because of more contemporary ideas about how to do the surgery. And so, really, in my opinion, the voice result after laser and after radiation is fairly similar, not a big difference, once you get out several months uh, from the, the surgery. Now, of course, if the amount of, of uh, vocal fold removed is very large, then that doesn't necessarily apply. But for these quite early uh, superficial tumors, laser surgery uh, gives very similar results vocally to uh, radiation. Now, uh, if, by the way, you have to remove quite a lot of the vocal fold, there is an, an option for an implant if the voice is weaker than desired. Now, the seventh and last point of comparison or competition is what happens if the initial treatment that you choose fails? Well, if radiotherapy fails, no more radiotherapy, you have to go to some form of surgery through the mouth or through the neck. If surgery fails, initial surgery fails, 
then you still have both options. You can go do additional surgery through the mouth or through the neck, and you can also do radiotherapy because you haven't used it up. Let's now summarize briefly this entire topic. It's a lot of information. First, we're talking about early superficial cancers of the vocal fold, stage one and two, highly curable, usually with one initial treatment. And you have two good options. Radiation therapy means approximately 30 visits to a radiation facility. You get some sunburn on your neck and inside your throat, sore throat, poor voice for a month or so. When the radiation reaction subsides, you should expect to have a high chance of cure, tumor gone forever, and voice is typically quite good, though usually not original. Or you can go to a day surgery center or an outpatient hospital and have a brief general anesthetic, uh, during which time a surgeon works through your mouth to carefully remove all of the tumor, usually with a laser, along with a tiny margin of normal tissue. You wake up with a hoarse voice just from manipulation, and from the removal, and it takes six or eight or longer weeks to gradually improve, generally to something very functional and similar to what you would get with radiation. Now, your decision <clears throat> is a personal one. It's going to have to do with your preferences, your individual tumor characteristics, and also the expertise available in your particular location. I appreciate your listening to this informational program and sincerely hope it will help you work more effectively with your personal physicians.